Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're glad you're here. Let's start with a couple songs tonight. Let's take our hymn book and uh, turn to 437. Hey, uh, amp. You on? The amp's not on. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's try it again. Welcome to our services tonight, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Let's take our hymn books, go to 437. 437, let's all stand together. We'll start by singing a couple of hymns and begin with 437, Since the Savior Found Me. Since the Savior found me, pardoned all my sins, I had had the joy and living hope within. Gone is all the shame and sorrow Save, save, I'm happy on the way. Save, save, saved, I love him more each day. Save, save, saved, I know he's mighty jar. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Since the Savior found me, all to him I owe. For his precious blood has washed me white as snow. Now no condemnation, happy as can be. I'm glad that Jesus justifies and sets me free. Save, save, saved, I'm happy on the way. Save, save, saved, I love him more each day. Save, save, saved, I know he's mighty jar. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. Since the Savior found me, I have perfect rest. Living in the realms of joy. waiting bright away. Save, save, saved, I'm happy on the way. Save, save, saved, I love him more each day. Save, save, saved, I know he's mighty jar. He saves and keeps and sanctifies me by his power. And let's turn back to two, uh, hymn number 22, not 200, 22. Yeah, you all thought we were going to pray, didn't you? Some people put their hymn books away. Hymn number 22, Christ is All I Need. We'll sing both stanzas here. have a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we are thankful to be here tonight. We're thankful for your blessings to us and for your love and care that you show us each day. And thank you for bringing us back safely. Pray that you would be honored and glorified in the service tonight. We thank you for the privilege of prayer and to be able to sing to you and, and, give, and sing praises up to, to you and to your name. Um, pray that we'd honor you with everything we do and pray that you would challenge us from your word tonight as, as Kevin brings the message and uh, just work in our hearts. And it's in your name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Great to see you tonight. Thank you for coming out and coming back. And uh, how many of you got a nap this afternoon? And not ashamed to say you got a nap this afternoon. Yes. Well, good. All right. Well, you looked refreshed and uh, ready to hear God's word tonight. We're looking forward to our time together this evening and um, just sharing in fellowship and, of course, our fellowship time afterwards. So, a couple of updates, again, some missions-related things. First and foremost, the two things we mentioned this morning, just as reminders. Um, Hope Children's Homes, our Missionary of the Month, 
and encourage you to consider, if you haven't already, having a part in our um, love offering for Bundles of Hope ministry. And we'd love to uh, be able to send a really good uh, love offering to that ministry to encourage them in that work. And then also on September the 10th, the Seed Line um, South Bible Assembly Project. And I really trust you'll consider coming out. I know we've had several already sign up. If you haven't, um, please consider that. Really encourage you to think about uh, having a hands-on part in the assembling of and the shipping of Bibles. And um, we will have those Bibles on the Sunday following. And um, just a prayer and time of dedication as uh, we ask the Lord to use his word in the hearts of people wherever they may end up going. So uh, don't forget you have an opportunity to do that and sign up. Also, just a couple of updates real quick. Um, we shared uh, some of this um, last couple of Sunday nights, um, but then well, actually our ministry meeting and then on Wednesday night, but especially for the sake since we have our live stream tonight, um, a couple of updates. One is for those of you that may not know, um, we did um, begin this month to partner with Anna Gilkey. Um, so she is a new part of our missionary family. Uh, Anna, of course, was here back in May, sharing her ministry, her burden, uh, to go and minister to the deaf. And um, so she is still raising support. She's actually in Washington State right now. Um, they are raising support. Also, uh, she was ministering at a camp um, as they were out there. And uh, so she's still at about 55% of her needed support. So the plan right now is for her and the Olson family that she works with, they, they have an open door of ministry in St. Lucia, which is in the Caribbean, and they're going to go down there for the month of October, and they'll be working with a ministry there to the deaf, going to be helping them uh, for a month, helping to expand and build on their ministry to the deaf in St. Lucia. The Olsons are going to continue there for two more months, helping that work, but Anna's going to need to come back to the States and seek to raise some more support. Um, and then the goal is in February of next year uh, for them to move to Portugal, which is the ultimate goal. Um, they'll have a home there. That will be home base, and they'll work from Portugal, go into Europe, Asia, and Africa, and help miss missionaries and ministries that want to establish ministries to the deaf. So... Make sure Anna is on your prayer list and uh, begin to pray for her if you haven't been already. And as we know more, she's, she'll be sending out reports and we'll pass those on to you. And then also uh, just an update on Zach and Sephora, his wife. I talked to Zach this week and that is how you pronounce his wife's name. Emphasis on the zip, Zipporah. And so um, they, they are uh, still continuing to raise support. They're doing well. Of course, he was in Thailand for a little while. Um, you may have read the letter I sent out this week, and uh, his friend in Nepal, Finde, is uh, now in therapy, which um, is an uh, absolute shock to doctors who did not, they, they just gave him hardly any chance to survive the motorcycle accident he was in, and now he's not only survived, but he's uh, in therapy. Still has a long, long way to go, but... Uh, very thankful for that, so continue to pray for him and his wife in Nepal. Again, he is a key friend, cohort, and important um, partner in ministry uh, when they do get to Nepal. And uh, as of right now, all restrictions have been lifted, and uh, they are able to go to Nepal. They have a deadline or a, a, a date they're shooting for is the first part of December. Um, so the only obstacle now is raising their last 10% of their support. So they're at 90%, but, uh, you know, COVID and all those restrictions have been lifted. Visa's not an issue. It's just primarily raising that last support, part of support uh, so they can go. So um, be praying for Zach and Zippera Bell. Um, little Jeremiah, the little baby, uh, it's got just a minor health issue they asked us to pray about, but uh, that they if there's something, they just want wisdom, if there's something that needs to be taken care of before they leave for the field. They just ask us to be praying for that. So I wanted to give you those couple of updates and uh, share those from our missionary family. And um, again, praying for all of our missionaries, but just wanted to highlight uh, those specific needs tonight. Well, one of the things I'm thankful for is the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. It's not like anything the world has. We have 
as the pastor describes it, a confident expectation of good in the future. And we can have hope for now in this life. One of the things I like to think about every once in a while is the hope of what it'll be like in heaven someday. When we're all together, we're all in, and, and we sing together in one great choir. Uh, that's, go that's gonna be a magnificent thing beyond our, our imaginations here, I'm sure. But it's, it's gonna be amazing to experience that in heaven someday. Well, as you take your hymn books, you can remain seated. Turn to 224. 224, we're gonna sing holy, holy, holy. And as you read the words, what I think we can do is maybe try to dream a little bit, maybe of what it would be like uh, as in heaven someday when we're singing to Christ, and maybe this song, I don't know, but a song certainly that portrays the same message that Jesus Christ, that God is holy, and sing out his praises. So let's sing hymn number 224 together. Holy, holy, holy. Let's all stand together and turn just a few pages over to 228. 228, let's all stand and sing, He Hideth My Soul. there. 
on the last. When clothed in his brightness, transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, his wonderful love, I'll shout with the millions on high. He hideth my soul in the glad of the rock that shadows a dry, thirsty land. He hideth my life in the depths of his love and covers me there with his hand. And covers me there with his hand. Great singing. You may be seated. Amen. Well, Hannah's home. Welcome home, Hannah. Always glad when you make it back. So it's great to see Hannah home. This is home. You haven't forgotten that, right? It's like you've been gone for a long time. You just pop in every now and then. So, uh, but we're glad when you pop in. So glad to have Hannah. She's working, uh, obviously, up the wilds now, as we've shared with you. I know you've been praying for her. I'm um, working the wilds year-round. Um, just came through the summer. Um, up at the camp itself, and uh, we'll hear a little bit, I guess, on how that went. And uh, but now she's going to be back in uh, Taylor's, uh, the Greenville area, working in the office there. And we're so thankful for the wilds over the years, and we're thankful for the uh, impact that the Lord has used it in our lives and the lives of our church family. And uh, now to see her working there is a blessing. And uh, so I've asked her to share just a little bit of what the Lord's doing in her life. And then a couple of friends with her tonight, Candace Holloway, I think I get that right. Y'all were roommates, if I remember, it's at, uh, at ABC at Appalachian. And um, her family works on staff at uh, ABC, and uh, so glad to have her. If you'd like to come and share anything, you're more than welcome, Candace. Don't, don't want to leave you out. Um, and then Kevin Rizma, did I say that right? Kevin is, um, grew up in Colorado. And uh, then he went to Maranatha Baptist University in Wisconsin, um, got his bachelor's in youth ministries, his master's in biblical counseling. He has been working at the Wilds for the last five summers and now is year-round at the Wilds at the camp, actually. And um, so when we met him, had the opportunity, privilege to meet him when we were at camp this summer, see him in action a little bit, working with the junior boot camp. And uh, clearly that he loves the Lord and loves children and loves ministry. And so when we heard that they were going to be swinging by here only for a few hours, um, I extended an invitation to him to share God's word. And so I'm so grateful that he agreed to that. And so I'm going to ask Hannah to come on up. She's going to share just a little bit what the Lord's doing in her life. When she's done, Kevin's going to come and uh, share the word of God with us and welcome you guys. Um, come back when you can stay longer. But we're certainly glad that uh, you've been able to stop in tonight. So come on and share with us. Hi. Um, so I started working at the Wilds um, full time at the end of January. So just at the beginning of February. Um, and honestly, it was a huge blessing how the Lord brought that about even um, I had been in a job that I was looking for a change, and then one of my friends with the Wilds, she was moving into a different position, and her position was coming available, and she messaged me almost the day where I came home, and I was like, I need to put my two weeks in. She messaged me that day and asked, hey, would you be interested in this, possibly? And I thought, wow, um, yes, sure. And then the Lord really worked it out, and so I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, I wasn't, I knew a little bit about the position, um, but it is a whole lot different than what I was doing before with counseling and anything like that. Um, and so my position is the summer registration secretary. Um, so I do a lot with facilitating the camp registrations, um, working with sponsors, communicating with them, um, working on all the details that they need to know. Um, and then if they have any details that we need to know, um, they do that. So kind of just a lot of the front end of the registration process is my position. Um, and so it is year round, um, and I am in Taylor's, South Carolina. Well, I live in Greenville, but Taylor's is right there. So um, 
that office, it's worked out really well because I am my roommates with Candace. Um, so I didn't have to move, which was very nice. We could just kind of transition into that. Um, like I said before, it's a very different position. Um, it's office work, which I enjoy doing a lot. Um, during the summer, I don't get much camper interaction, um, which was a little bit difficult um, because there were some days where I barely even saw campers. And by the end of the week, I'm kind of like, oh, what even happened? Like, who won the week? <laughs> what decisions were made? I have no idea. Um, but I do, as I'm kind of, I, I came to, went to GBC a couple of times because Kevin works in JBC uh, and so I went to see him a few times because he's in the fun time show and they do this thing in G junior boot camp where they'll call up the campers by name to spin the wheel um, and so I would go every week and sometimes I'd be on my laptop in the back um, but every time they would call up someone's name it was like oh I talked to their mom for 30 minutes on the phone the other day, and that's the camper, and I got to put a face with a name, and that was just like a huge highlight to my whole summer, even if it was just five campers who I got to see their faces with their names, that was just a huge thing for me. Um, and then, um, so we're office, long hours um, during the summer, um, and I'll be setting up camp again for next summer so we're already transitioning into 2023 which is crazy um, but a couple of highlights from this summer we got to have all 10 weeks of camp and family camp um, which was a huge blessing because we have missed weeks of camp the past two years um, so the fact that we could have all 10 weeks of camp was amazing um, it's so cool as I'm working on final reports I now get to see some of the decisions that were made during the summer and that's like crazy just to see names and the amounts of decisions that were made for the Lord um, and seeing things with counselors and churches and how many churches came and how many campers came and as I'm filing through all of this data and information it's overwhelming because of the ministry that the Wilds has um, and just the blessing, even though I didn't get to see as much on during the camp weeks, um, just seeing that the Lord really does work. And I'm going to cry. Um, um, so it was a really great summer. It was very challenging um, just because it was a very different position for me um, to be at camp. But I'm very, very thankful for the opportunity. Um, to just see that the Lord works through so many different things, so many different situations, so many different sponsors. Um, and so it was really just cool to see a different aspect of it. And I probably explained it a little bit sporadically, um, but it was very awesome to see the Lord work in that way. So um, I appreciate your prayers as I'm still going through final reports. Um, so it's a lot of information. Um, and a lot of things. And then if you're able to pray for me as we're setting up camps for 2023, um, it's a big learning curve for me. Um, and so I'm thankful for those in the office who have um, really helped come alongside of me uh, and teach me. Um, but I appreciate your prayers as I move forward with learning um, and for the campers who are even registering in the next couple of weeks that the Lord has them coming for certain reasons and that the Lord just starts preparing their hearts even now um, in their churches to then maybe come to the wilds and have a different take on something or, or something like that. So I appreciate your prayers and it's good to see you all. I miss you guys a lot. <laughs> Thanks. All right, well, good evening. Um, I am Kevin Rizma. I'm dating Hannah, and that's why I'm here. Um, I'm very excited to be with you guys. I'm really um, excited for the opportunity to bring the word tonight and very thankful that your pastor asked me to. Um, I'll share just a few other things about me before I get started um, this evening. First of all, like he said, I am from Colorado, and I grew up there my entire life. I have a big family back home. I'm one of seven kids, and I am the second youngest. I have an oldest brother, then four sisters, and then a younger brother. So I grew up with four extra, four extra moms in my life, which was really special. Um, and I grew up there, like I said, and then I went up to Maranatha. 
um, in Wisconsin. So being in Florida is a little bit different for me. Um, Colorado doesn't have any humidity there. And uh, Wisconsin, it got down to negative 50 one time while I was there with the wind chill. So the humidity, just stepping out of the car, was a little bit different for me um, doing that. But um, I am very thankful to be here tonight. I have um, been working at the Wilds, too, as Pastor mentioned, for five summers. I counseled there after my freshman year of college in 2016, and then I came back in 2019 and started working in the junior camp there. That is actually when I met Hannah the first time. We were just acquaintances then, um, but I met her the first time, and then I've been working there the last four summers in junior camp. Then after um, the summer of 2021, I stayed on and I've been on uh, the full-time, or not the full-time, but the contracted program where I'm there around the year. And last J January, February, I can't remember, um, kind of reconnected with Hannah and been talking ever since. And we've been dating now for just over three months. So it has been a really big blessing in my life to have her there. And um, Hannah really does a lot at the Wild. She works very long hours. She works very, very hard. And she makes camp happen, really. She makes all, makes it possible for all of the campers to get there. She communicates with the sponsors and she makes sure all the campers have exactly what they need. And so she really makes camp happen. She is very vital to that. So be, definitely be in prayer for her as she continues to do that um, ministry as well. Um, tonight, we are going to discuss the topic of prayer. Um, Hannah and I actually were listening to the uh, message this morning as we were driving up and I was just like, please don't go to my passage, please don't preach on my passage. And he actually did, your pastor did mention a few of the verses that we'll go to, but I think it's actually going to work along well with what was talked about this morning. Um, and really the biggest thing that I got out of the message this morning, listening to it, was that God's grace is truly enough for us. And I really liked how pastor brought out the truth that God's grace isn't always what we think is best in our own lives. However, his grace will always help us become more Christ-like. And one of the key ways that we can do this as believers, we can receive God's grace, is through prayer. And maybe for you tonight, maybe your prayer life is strong. Maybe you, you spend a lot of time in prayer, and that's awesome. Um, perhaps for others, um, your prayer life is weak and not what it should be. Um, for me personally, I have always struggled um, in this area of the Christian life is in prayer. There have been times where it has been good, where I'm spending a lot of time in prayer, I'm depending on God as I should, but there's also times where it has been hard and I've struggled immensely in that area. And the passage we're going to look at tonight is Philippians chapter 4. So you can go ahead and turn there in your Bibles. Um, and I hope whether your personal time in prayer is solid or weak, that this passage um, will encourage you guys. I know it has in my life as well. This passage, um, chapter 4, um, here, Paul is writing to the believers that are in Philippi. And this is the first um, town in Macedonia where Paul established a church. And our passage is right near the end of the book. And in chapter 3, right before it, um, Paul is discussing the goal of straining for Christ-likeness and really trying to become more Christ-like. And now in this last chapter of the book, Paul is giving some closing thoughts of exhortation, encouragement, prayer, and God's provision. We'll look at three different things this evening. We're going to look at the plan, the product, and the provision of prayer. So in chapter 4, let's go ahead and start reading at verse 6. And this is what the Bible has to say. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, if you go down to verse 19, it says this, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And if we're going to be talking about prayer this evening, I think it's only appropriate to start off with some prayer. So let's pray this evening before we get started. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity I have to, to preach tonight. Thank you for this church and the faithful members that are here this evening. I just pray that you can help all of us to learn from your word tonight. Give me the, the grace that I need to communicate clearly and effectively. 
And I pray that everything that's said and done tonight will honor and glorify you. Thank you so much for Christ and what he's done on the cross for us. Thank you that because of that, we can be saved from our sin and we can have a relationship with you. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for your love. Thank you that you care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so the first plan, or first point, I'm sorry, we can see this evening is the plan. Okay, and not having a plan in our lives makes us worry. A good example for this is sports. Does anybody like sports over here? Just a couple? Okay, does anybody like football? All right, I, I hear that your pastor is a big Alabama fan. Big Al no, I'm just kidding. Definitely not. No, uh, we, won't, we won't bring that up anymore. But um, let's use football as an example. Okay, let's see, say that your team is down by six points with three seconds to go. Your, the ball's on the five-yard line. Your coach calls a timeout. All the players, they hustle over to the sideline to hear what the coach has to say. But as soon as they get there, the coach doesn't say anything. He doesn't give them a play. doesn't tell them what to do. He doesn't even say a word. Okay? How do you think the players would feel going back on the field to play the last play of the game before they try to win the game? They would probably be worried, right? They'd be confused as what they should do to, to even try and make a play or do anything to win that game. And just as players in that situation would be worried, they'd be scared, in our own lives, we get scared, we worry when we don't have a plan or when the plan changes. I know for myself, I tend to worry and become anxious if my expectations of something change. If I go into a certain situation and I had these ideas of what it should be and what's going to happen, and if that changes, it makes me nervous a lot. And I, I, it, it's hard for me to, to be able to trust God in that situation. But thankfully, God has given us a plan. So we don't have to worry. His plan for us as Christians simply is to pray. Personally, I know that a lot of times, just like I said, I struggle with this, and I don't want to be dependent on someone else. There are times when I think I know how to do something right, or I don't need anyone else's input um, on something in my life. I know that in general, I think that men um, struggle to ask for help in certain situations. There's times where we're building things, we don't need the instruction manual, right? We can do it all our own. Or when we're driving, we definitely don't need help with directions. We don't have to ask where we're going. Uh, but definitely having this mindset or having this attitude is a problem for us because we're sinners. We mess up and we fail quite often. And because of our sinfulness, when we try to do things on our own strength, we fail. And a lot of the times we seek control in our lives, but ultimately we are not the one that's in control. Only God is. And because of that, we must be dependent on God to give us his wisdom, his guidance, and his grace to live a life that is truly honoring and glorifying to God. One of the biggest ways that we can do this and show our dependence on God is by having a consistent, fervent prayer life. Going back to our passage, verse 6 begins with a command. It says this, be careful for nothing. And in this verse, God is commanding us not to worry or be anxious about anything in our lives. So what are some things that we tend to worry about? I think some examples of some things that we tend to be anxious or not trust God about is perhaps money or a job or our health or in general just what the future holds as well. I also think that a lot of the time um, failures and mistakes of the past can cause us so much worry and fret um, and past faults keep us from trusting God. And this goes back all to that control that we seek in our lives. And we have all the things, um, we have all have different things in our lives that make us anxious and make us worry um, throughout our life. But fret and worry indicate a lack of trust in God's wisdom, his sovereignty, and his power over our lives. When we're worrying about something, we are communicating to God that we do not trust him. Um, when we worry, we're believing that God is not in control. He's not wise. He doesn't have the power to help us. He doesn't love us or that he doesn't want what's best for us. Even going back to the past mistakes and the past failures, if we just think that we're going to mess up again or fail again when we're faced with something, that means that we're not trusting God to work in us 
and change us to do better in the next step of life or go do better in that certain area that we struggle. And truly, if we're dwelling on past mistakes, we aren't focusing on God as we should. We're actually just focusing on ourselves. Um, my grandma is someone that has um, given me so many different or advice in my life. And something that she said to me that has really stuck with me um, ever since um, she said this was this. If you worry, why pray? And if you pray, why worry? So how much do we really trust God? Are we living with a true dependence on God's sovereignty and his power over our lives? Do we really believe that God does want what's best in our lives? Do we think that we know better than God in certain areas of our lives? And for all of us here tonight, if there are areas that we are struggling to trust God with in our lives, the best thing that we can do is to go to God in prayer and then start delighting and meditating on his word. A passage that comes to mind when I think of worrying is Matthew 6, verse 25, verses 25 through 32. You can turn there if, you're like. if you like. I'm going to read this passage. It's a lengthy um, portion of scripture, but I think it's very applicable to this um, topic of worrying and prayer. So Matthew 6, verse 25, it says this. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? Now, I've tried that. I'm short. It doesn't work. Okay, we will continue reading. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the fields, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall I eat, or what shall I drink, or wherewithal shall I be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all of these things. So the truth is, God cares about all of us so much, and he wants what's best for us. And the more we're thinking about how great God really is, and all that he's done for us, the easier it's going to be for us to trust him. We must have the right belief about who God is, and God does want what's best for us. He does care for us more than we can ever even comprehend. And the better we know God, the more we're going to trust him. And the way that we do this is we have to uh, fill our mind with truth, and then we can not worry after that. And we do this through prayer, and we do this through spending time in God's word. Going back to our passage in verse 6, the next phrase says this, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. A key, phrase, or a key word in that phrase is everything. Nothing can be left untouched according to this verse. Nothing in our lives are too small or too big for God. And all of our difficulties are within God's purposes. So no matter how big or how small our problems might be, God wants us to depend on him for the answers. Um, and not ourselves. When anything burdens our mind or our spirit, we must ease it with prayer. When our lives become perplexed and confused, we must seek God's direction and his support. And a, uh, a quote that I've heard that really helps me in this area is that prayer must be our first response, not our last resort. Um, have any of you heard of Rand Hummel before? He works at the Wilds. He was a director there for a while. Now he works at the Wilds of New England. Um, one of the sessions that I've heard him do um, that he talks about prayer is, it's called CPR, and it stands for Confession, Praise, and Requests. So confession is the first part that he talks about. And I don't know about you guys, but this is definitely the weakest aspect of my prayer life, um, personally. I think that a lot of us in here have no problem going to God and asking him for all these requests of things that we want and we desire, but it's hard to go, go to God in prayer and 
own up to our sin and own up to failing again in the same area that we've been struggling with our whole life. But confession is such a vital aspect of prayer. It helps us refocus our minds and think of who we are and who, in light of who God is, and it keeps our focus on the gospel as well. And if we confess our sins, we are viewing ourselves, like I just said, in light of who God is. Um, and we are sinners in need of a great Savior. 1 John 1, 9 says this, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And aren't you so thankful that God is willing to forgive us when we sin? None of us deserve this forgiveness, yet God loves us so much that he gave it to us freely through his Son, Jesus Christ. So when we do sin, and we will, we must confess it and ask forgiveness from God. The next part of the CPR session is praise. And gratitude to God accompanies all true prayer. Psalm 34 verse 1 says this, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. So when we pray to God, are we thanking him for all that he's done in our lives? Do we really see how blessed we truly are in our lives? We truly serve a mighty and awesome God, but do we thank him as much as we should? Do we praise him as much as we should in, in prayer? Then the last part is requests. I'm um, going back to verse 6 of our passage once again. It says this, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your, requ uh, let your requests be made known unto God. Another awesome thing about God is that he wants to know our desires. And I think that's just amazing that God wants to hear from us personally. And instead of trying to find all the answers ourselves and seek that control that we want, we must let God provide the answers for us. Um, a quote that I found about prayer is this. It's been very helpful to me in this study as well. It says this, Prayer is the offering up of our desires to God or making them known to him. Let your requests be made known to God, not that God needs to be told either our wants or desires, for he knows them better than we can tell him, but he will know them from us and have us show our regards and concern and express our value of the mercy and sense of our dependence on him. So God wants to hear our desires and our requests because he wants us to show our dependence on him, not on ourselves. So confession praise and requests are three very important aspects of prayer and we should work on implementing each of those into our own prayer life to grow in that area. The second thing we can see from our passage is the product. So we've discussed the plan. Very simply, the plan is to pray. Now the product of following that plan of prayer is peace. Going back to verse 7 in our passage, it says this, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Notice that first phrase um, back in this verse, and the peace of God. So that peace is an inner calm or peacefulness um, that is promised to us if we follow the plan of prayer in our lives. And here's another quote that helps um, with this thought as well. As believers, we should have a thankful attitude based on an unfailing confidence that God is both able and willing to do what is best for us. Then going to the next phrase in verse 7, it says, Which passeth all understanding. And this refers to the divine origin of peace, which of course is God's peace. It transcends human intellect, understanding, and knowledge. Isaiah uh, 26 verses 3 and 4 say this, Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting life. So having a fixed mindset on God will give us a peace that unsaved people will never know. They will never understand. And if we can fully trust and rely on God, uh, we can fully trust and rely on God because he has everlasting strength and he promises to give us this peace. Now going to the last phrase of this verse, it says, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. A word there that sticks out to me is the word keep. And that means to guard or to watch over. And the peace that God gives us if we trust on him, it guards us from anxiety, from doubt, and from fear. And when Paul uses the words hearts and minds in that, that phrase as well, he isn't trying to make a distinction between the two. 
He's actually using both hearts and minds to describe the whole inner person of a believer. So because of our union with Christ at salvation, he will guard our inner being with his peace. So if we follow the plan of prayer, God promises to guard and watch over us with his peace. So my question now to you is, have you been following the plan? Do you have God's peace in your life? It's promised us, according to the verses, if we've been following it. So if you don't have God's peace in your life, perhaps we need to go back and reevaluate if we truly are praying and depending on God as we should. And going back to even this morning, too, as Pastor talked about, um, remember that God's plan might not always follow what our plans are, what our expectations of what he should do are. But whatever God's plan is for our lives, we can remember that it will in the long run, help us become more like Christ. And focusing on that and remembering that God will work in us and continue to help us become more like Christ can give us that peace, but it takes trust and dependence to get there. So, so far we've seen the plan and the product of prayer. And lastly, this evening we're going to look at the provision of prayer. So going back um, to verse 19, it says this, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So simply put, the provision is God's supply. God will supply all the answer to our needs if we truly depend on him. As we talked about earlier, none of our needs are too big or too small for God. He cares about all of them. God's resources never run out to provide for us. He has an infinite amount of grace that he will give to us if we simply trust and depend on him. I even think about the the illustration that he talked about this morning of the rich woman that had all that money, but she didn't spend any of it, right? She still just kept all of it and didn't use it. And how silly of us to, instead of depending on God's grace and God's wisdom, try and fix things in our own might, in in our wisdom that will fail us over and over again. But because of Christ's work on the cross for our behalf, We can be saved from our sin. We can have a personal relationship with God. And then we have the Holy Spirit living in us to help us grow to be more like Christ. Going back to the beginning of the book in Philippians, chapter 1, verse 6, it says this, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Christ. One commentator said this, When God begins a work of salvation in a person, he finishes and perfects that work. So we can trust that God is going to help us become more like Christ. He will never fail us, but we will fail if we don't trust him. And we will worry and be anxious about things if we're not trusting in God's grace. But if we do, he will continue to help us grow in this area. One example um, of how God helped me learn to trust and depend more on him instead of my own strength was when I was a counselor my first time at the Wilds. Um, I was a counselor back in 2016, like I said. It was right after my freshman year of college. And going into that summer, I I was a little nervous about counseling, but I thought I knew enough to be able to help my campers. I was too confident in myself. I mean, after all, I had already made it through high school, and I had one year of Bible college, so I knew just about everything I needed to know, right? I was, I was, 19 years old. I was 19 or 20. No, I did not know anything about what I needed to do, okay? After those first few weeks, I realized just how truly little my knowledge was of God's Word. I got asked so many questions by my campers that I could not answer. I felt completely overwhelmed. I had no idea where to take them in Scripture to help them, and during those first few weeks, I was trusting in my own ability and my own wisdom to try and help my campers change. And at that point, I really realized I could not do this. I realized I could not trust in my own strength. So I went to other counselors. I went to my lead counselor. And after um, talking with all of them, all they said was this, you need to go pray, you need to ask God for his guidance, and he will help you. And God is willing to help us, but we first have to admit that we do need his help and then go, af- go after that. I remember last, uh, that summer praying so many times, God, I have no idea how to deal with this situation. I have no idea how to counsel this um, this problem that this camper has. 
But I know that you have the wisdom, I know that you have the grace, and I know that you can help work in this camper's lives. And I was thankfully blessed to see a lot of my campers, not because of my wisdom, not because of my, um, my a knowledge of God's word, but I was able to see so many different campers grow, get saved, and make great decisions for God. And they grew because God was at work, not me. His word was at work. His word was changing them to become more like Christ. And if any of us ever want to accomplish anything for God, we must allow him to work through our lives. We must humbly submit to his will and realize that he will provide all that we'll ever need to live a life that is honoring and glorifying to him. James 1.17 says this, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And I'm so thankful for God's graciousness and his provision in our lives. And everything that he will give us will be adequate, complete, and beneficial to live a life that is glorifying to him. So this evening, just in closing, we've looked at three different things in uh, Philippians chapter 4. First of all, we've seen the plan. And the plan is to pray to God and rely on him. Secondly, we've seen the product. God's peace is promised to us if we follow the plan of prayer. Lastly, we've seen the provision, and that provision comes straight from God. He will supply all that we will ever need, he, and we must go into the rest of our lives truly relying and trusting in God. Whether life is easy for you, whether life is hard, we must give all our requests up to Him and trust that He will provide for us. And with God's help, We can learn to pray and better depend on him. And if we do that, he's going to give us the grace that we need to become more like Christ. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this opportunity to look in your word. Thank you for the promises that we can trust that you will keep. God, we know that if we pray and truly depend on you, that you will provide the grace that we need. You will help us in ways that Um, We won't even see, um, we won't even think that is right, but you will work out what's best for us. Thank you so much for your love. Thank you that you are in control and that you will work in each of our lives to become more like Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, our prayer life says so much about our life in general as believers it is a tremendous spiritual thermometer if you want to use that term Um, and that's uncomfortable in other words if I were to say let's take your spiritual temperature how healthy you are spiritually prayer is a good way to do that because our prayer life reflects three very important things in our life One is, it reflects our devotion to God. How so? The most often given command in the scriptures is to pray. So if we're not praying, we're not obeying. So it says something about our obedience and our devotion to God. It says something about our desire for God. Because do we really desire Him? To commune with Him? To fellowship with Him? How much do I desire him. Do I really do I really love and desire? Well, how much? How often do you talk to him? How often do you fellowship with him? But thirdly, and what we've been clearly reminded of tonight, it reflects my dependence on God. It reflects my prayer life. Reflects how much I really believe I need God. And so often, and too often, our prayer life is um, a 911 call. God, I will call you when I get in trouble. When I can't figure it out, when I can't manage on my own, I'll give you a call. And that's often our prayer life, um, instead of what it should be. In everything, I'm praying. Why? Because I depend on him for everything in all of my life. I pray without ceasing. Why? Because I can do nothing for the glory of God in my own strength. So we have to pray. Prayer is a demonstration of how dependent we are. Um, Man, I know, as Kevin confessed, too often in my life, when I get that thermometer out, okay, I need to get things back in line here. These are, this is really a critical way of thinking about um, my spiritual life when I evaluate through my prayer life. Um, But 
That is the plan, is that we be dependent on him in everything. And then what a wonderful reminder um, how the Holy Spirit drew that message and the one this morning together in terms of, of when we go to him, rely on him completely, what is, what's the result? That perfect peace, that serenity, that, that tranquility of heart. And um, what an what a opportunity. And I don't, know, I don't know what song we're singing tonight, but what comes to my mind, is, oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And um, I don't know. I'm, you didn't come to hear me preach. Kevin's already preached. But that's good stuff, and uh, we need to remember it and uh, thank God for it. Meditate on it. Don't be a forgetful hearer. And let's not just say, oh, there's another prayer, uh, message on prayer. Let's really say, Lord, thank you for using that, for that reminder tonight of where I am spiritually. And by your grace, let me demonstrate my dependence on you by following the plan, which is to pray. So thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much for sharing that with us. What are we singing tonight? 116. I need thee every hour. Perfect one. We need him. We are dependent on him all the time. 118, you said? 118. Um, I need thee every hour. Let's stand together as we sing. We'll sing the first and second verses. I need thee every hour. Well, Kevin, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing God's word with us tonight and uh, for breaking the bread, and uh, we thank the Lord for that. Uh, really glad to have you and, and Hannah and Candace with us tonight. Um, I, I didn't realize this before. All these years, I thought it was um, Ken Collier and um, Willie Parton that, you know, that made things work at the Wilds. And, you know, I've, I've always thought it was those. And now to find out it's Hannah Palalis. <laughs> She's the one that makes camp happen. I heard it tonight from an official source. <laughs> Hannah makes camp happen. Um, you know, I don't know that either one of them did justice to uh, Hannah's work. Kind of talked a little bit about overwhelming Hannah, um, probably in the ballpark of 10 to 12,000 campers, sponsors. Nine thousand. It's about nine thousand six hundred twenty-two. Is that what you're saying? nine thousand campers? So when she says she is in charge of registering campers for the summer, that's nine thousand six hundred something camper registrations and sponsors. That is a significant amount of work. So um, and it is. I know I've been a sponsor for years and. Um, communicating with the Wilds office is extremely important and getting everything um, down and registration if you've never been to the Wilds at camp registration day is an incredibly from our perspective Hannah it is an incredibly well-run process I mean you go when you've got any week of camp the week we went I think there's 1100 sponsors and campers or something like that that we Getting them checked in, in the right cabins, with the right count, I mean, that is an incredible uh, operation. Now, it's probably chaotic from your perspective, from ours, and Hannah is a big 
important cog in that whole machine. So thank you for your work, Hannah. Thank you for sharing. We do pray for you, and um, we're so, so thankful for your work and um, praying for you too now, Kevin. Um, and uh, thank you for your ministry to the Lord. Well, we're going to go in and fellowship a little bit, get some desserts ready over in the fellowship hall, and um, express your appreciation to Kevin and uh, greet Hannah if you have it. And uh, again, Candace, glad to have you with us tonight as well. Let's dismiss in prayer. Father, we thank you for once again your words and its, its role in our life. Thank you that uh, when we, every time we open it, um, there is something there that we need, that we can feast on and learn from. And uh, so we thank you for it tonight. Thank you for Kevin, the time that he spent preparing and then sharing your word. I just pray that uh, we will just go home and reevaluate where we are spiritually in light of our prayer life and uh, how just how dependent we are on you and how much peace we are forfeiting because we're trying to do things in our own strength and not depending on you bless the time of fellowship tonight we pray your blessings on the food thank you for everyone who prepared it and uh, dismiss us now we pray with your blessings in jesus name amen mm -hmm.